Hi, Cole here from Storytelling with Data. I want to kick things off today with a story. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was confident among her small group of friends, but she had shaking hands, a quivering voice, and an abundance of filler words when speaking to a crowd. The little girl grew up and went to college and got a job. Her knowledge and skills increased. However, she still had shaking hands, a quivering voice, and an abundance of filler words when she shared her work. She realized that this was a problem. She tried many different things and over time found tricks and strategies that helped her improve. Finally, she was able to do her great work justice by speaking about it confidently. You may have guessed that little girl is me. Today, I want to share a simple strategy that I have used and that you can use to improve how you present. Record yourself. It's quick, it's easy, uh, not quite painless. We'll talk about that. But today, I'll share five steps that you can use to record yourself to improve. Start by setting up, then we'll do three rounds of review, followed by some self reflection. Start by setting up. The first thing that you want to do is select some content. This be about five minutes of something that you know well that you can present. Could be a slide or two from a recent presentation deck. Maybe there is a graph that you need to explain to someone. You could even pick your favorite pastime and talk about why you enjoy it. Or perhaps you'll practice introducing yourself. Get your content ready and then set yourself up to record. For this, you can use QuickTime, Zoom, uh, even your phone, anything that will allow you to record both video and audio. So we're going to be both watching and listening to identify improvements. If you're preparing for something specific, consider how you might emulate the environment for your recording. If you're going to be seated and speaking virtually, sit down, practice talking to the camera. If you'll be standing, stand up. You may even practice looking around the room as you run through your materials. You can see how you'll fare in the anticipated environment. I suggest you talk through your materials once to practice and then a second time while recording. After you've recorded comes review number one. And this first review is really just getting over the discomfort of watching yourself. It is uncomfortable. It gets better the more you do it. But you may watch it and think to yourself, I don't sound like that. And it's true. You don't sound like that to yourself because you're used to hearing your own voice from the perspective of the one speaking rather than the one listening. This first review is really just to get over any preconceived notions about how you look and sound so that in respective reviews, you can really concentrate on actionable areas for improvement. Review number two is all about watching yourself. For this, I actually recommend muting the volume so you can really focus on how you look and how you move. Take notes as you watch. I encourage you to look both for the details of things that are working well, as well as anything that stands out as awkward or otherwise not ideal. It's likely that you'll have some obvious observations come up as you watch yourself. But if you want some specifics to take a look for, notice your posture. Are you slouching or sitting or standing up straight? Do you look stiff? or relaxed and comfortable. The more comfortable you look when presenting, the more at ease that's going to put your audience as well. Are you doing anything strange with your eyes or facial expressions? Are you happy and excited and smiling or frowning or making other noteworthy expressions? About how are you using your hands? If you didn't notice them, probably you are using them well. But recording is fantastic in the way that we can pick up things that we didn't even know we were doing. For example, pointing our clicker at the screen every time we need to advance a slide. So you can make these observations 
that then allow us to modify intentionally and improve how we communicate, not only in a presentation setting, but overall. In review number three, you're going to listen to yourself. In the same way that we muted the volume when we were focused on watching how we look and move, I recommend minimizing the video so that you can focus all of your attention on how you sound and what you're saying. As you did when you watched yourself, take notes. Anything that strikes you as good or perhaps in need of attention. Some things to be aware of in particular include filler words, they're the obvious. Um, uh, likes that come up repeatedly, oftentimes for folks, particularly if you're just starting to get comfortable speaking in front of others in a formal setting. There are some maybe less obvious ones, though, that become obvious when you hear yourself speak and use them frequently, sort of, right? One of my recent crutches has been starting every sentence with, so, so I trying to learn uh, different transition words or just eliminate that and start with whatever the next word will be. Any sort of repeated words, th those will stand out to you even if you're not listening for them. Your pace of speech. Are you talking really fast and it's sort of uncomfortable or have you slowed down too much? These are things that you can adjust. And these are things that you can vary as you're speaking as well. When something gets exciting, you can think about speeding up or slow down to make a point. Speaking of which, pauses are something that can be great to work on in this way because it can feel uncomfortable integrating pauses when you're speaking if you're not used to it. But if you can watch yourself and see how that looks and feels natural on the receiving side can be a way to work them into how you speak when you're presenting. Volume is something else to be aware of. Are you loud? Are you quiet? Do you vary in ways that makes sense? Pitch is also something that should be varied a little bit at least so you don't sound monotone, but not so much that you start to sound sing-songy. You've reviewed yourself three times, overcome the awkwardness, you watched yourself, you've listened to yourself. Now it's time to evaluate. When you compare yourself to how you want to look and sound when you present, what changes might you make? After identifying any modifications, practice them. Get comfortable and that'll help to make them stick. I also suggest you review your notes before you present the next time so you have your modifications top of mind. I should mention that you are watching the very first episode of a new series that we're calling Storytelling with Cole. We have some fun plans for episodes to come, which are all going to center around communicating effectively, drawing on lessons from my new book, Storytelling with You. Plan, create, and deliver a stellar presentation. If you'd like to learn specific strategies when it comes to looking like someone people want to watch and sounding like someone people want to listen to, click on the link that just appeared to order your copy today. I'll point your attention in particular to chapter 10. In the meantime, I encourage you to record yourself. Leave a comment about one modification you commit to making as a result of this exercise, and we'll pick a couple lucky commenters to receive some fun swag. If you'd like to take things a step further, I invite you to share your recording in the Storytelling with Data community exercise, Record Yourself. Do that, and you might get feedback from me, the Storytelling with Data team, or the broader community. Use today's tip to record yourself to improve your next presentation. See you next time.